Well, he's consistent, that is for sure, and just an incredible, incredible athlete that I'm sure we're going to see dominate this course um, as soon as this timer kicks off. Joe, also our 2020 world champion. He's been to stage three on a number of occasions at the world championship, beaten stage one seven times. An incredibly consistent athlete showing his power and showing promise as he moves into the back end of this placement run, going for a top spot, going for that seeded place that will allow him to be good in the challenge course. Looking Joe linking links. the wheels, linking straight up to the wow. sword. Nobody's done that yet. That's the most efficient we've seen moved through driver's end, and he's going to secure an incredible time there. 36 seconds for Joe Morawski. It'll be we one second beyond Colton, but still incredibly <laughs> impressive. Joe Morawski has some of our competitors almost, I think he's about double Colton's age, but he <laughs> is not one to let the young guns show him up. Yeah, it's Joe Morawski, an athlete that I get the feeling... And we, we make the sarcasm joke every time. You guys know who Joe Morawski is. <laughs> I'm going to... Of course. I'm going to shame him a little bit by saying that he was in 30th in points in New England, so... I mean, that, okay, that does well, not mean that there are 29 New England ninjas better than he is. Just no, I don't think the, the points re reflect him. Family commitments and a number of other commitments that prevent him from competing as much as he might want to. Well, he may have scored 30th in the points, but he is showing why he is one of the best at the moment. Lining up to Kaleidoscope with an incredible time, chasing down Josiah Pipel and Joe Meisner, looking to secure that top four spot. He's the head coach at Stanford Ninja Academy, which has produced some of the best ninjas in the world in a number of different divisions. Deftly maneuvering through the logs, and quickly through the boats. This is one of the fastest times we've seen. Threatening Joe Meisner's time. I don't think he can beat the 102. No, but he is definitely coming in. If oh he no, he didn't oh. get the he didn't get his left hand on it. He didn't get his left hand on the vertical disc. The the pace definitely got him there. He was pushing the time, trying to beat Joe Meisner. There's probably not potential there, but he could still secure a top a, th a third place run here if he can go really really fast. He has to beat a minute 24 to beat Luke Dillon's time. James Burns is 127. Right now is the cutoff. Dynoing up and hits the buzzer. Now, I think 129 is an incorrect time for him. Do you believe? So he looks okay. annoyed at his time right now. But I think that will be adjusted to get him into the top four. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, only only time will tell what time he ends up getting. But regardless, it was an incredible run. I'm sure he wasn't hoping for those slip-ups on Area 53. It's clear that if, if he'd just taken a little bit more time, he would have been fine. But I, I think it's just that time pressure and the, the expectation of what the top four requires that got to him. Yeah, you can just see him slipping there. I'm rewinding I'm on the VOD, and it looks like his time with...